Now, thanks to new fossil discoveries and technologies, we're getting to learn more and more about the biology of dinosaurs. Some people don't need to know more than the fact that a few of them were colossal, terrifying, and vicious. But for those of us that do, the use of comparative biology, pigment analysis, and powerful new x-rays have allowed us to gain insight into specific features, such as their colors, eating behaviors, and the shapes of their tongues. Yes, that's right, the shapes of their tongues, which, for a long period of time, was something of a mystery. This is because soft, fleshy dinosaur parts are hardly ever retained in fossil form. But thanks to the discovery of some surviving hyoid bones, which are situated at the root of the tongue in front of the neck, we now have some insight. Most animals have this hyoid bone that anchors the tongue. The shape and complexity of the bone determine how free-moving the tongue can be. Scientists have discovered that nearly all dinosaurs had simple tongues that laid flat and were extremely similar to the tongues found inside the mouth of a crocodile today. Yeah, this crocodile. Go ahead and take a closer look. Nah, just kidding. Come on back. Let's take a look at some specific dinosaurs and start with a Brachiosaurus. Let me stick my neck out on the line by guessing that most of you will be familiar with this dinosaur because of its neck. You know, the one which was typically 30 feet in length? Despite its neck being its most distinctive feature, its name actually translates to arm lizard in Greek. It's common knowledge that the Brachiosaurus is one of the largest dinosaurs to ever have lived. On average, it reached 76 feet in length and 40 feet in height, as roughly the length of two school buses and as high as a four-story building none of which were around in the era of the big guy here. Fragmentary leg bones and vertebra of even larger dinosaur species are known, but these skeletal remains are too incomplete to determine their exact size. So this guy may have been the largest dinosaur ever. A renowned herbivore, thank goodness. The Brachiosaurus is thought to have eaten up to 880 pounds of dry plant matter every day. Most of this was made up of coniferous trees, ginkgos, and cycads. This target might have been hard to hit for this dinosaur, as researchers have learned that its teeth were spoon-shaped and not ideal for chewing food. This means that the creature would have swallowed vegetation whole, as its teeth were suited to stripping it but not breaking up large chunks of plants. This, along with the dinosaur's body shape, suggests that the Brachiosaurus would have liked to feed as quickly as possible. Dinos like these didn't always make use of their ability to strip towering trees when dining. The Brachiosaurus traveled in herds, moving to the next location once they had exhausted all of the local vegetation. And I mean all of the local vegetation, not just that which hung high on trees. It's likely that the creatures supplemented their diets with vegetation at lower levels, especially after they'd done a number on all the nearby trees. This method of feasting was the most energetically appealing for this giant. By munching on lower vegetation, researchers believe that the dinosaurs saved up to 80% in energy compared to when foraging for high-up food sources. They have also discovered that the nostrils of a Brachiosaurus were on the front of its face and not the top. This is because we now know they roamed the fertile floodplains in their respective herds. For decades, it was believed that these creatures lived in deep, watery swamps. Let's look at another common misconception about a popular dinosaur. Please put your hands together for the Tyrannosaurus rex, which is arguably the most famous of all dinosaurs. Discoveries from the past 100 years have revealed that theropods had heavily feathered skin. Theropods are the family of dinosaurs to which the T. rex belongs, so naturally, people began to think that the creature would have been covered in feathers as well. However, a study from 2017 took skin impressions from the iconic dinosaur and found no evidence of the structures required to support feathers. If a T. rex did have feathers, they would have been limited to its back. Researchers accept that other large dinosaurs of the same family as the T. rex have been discovered with their remains covered in feathers. An example of this would be the Uteranus dinosaur. 
But as of now, the accepted theory is that feathers weren't a common feature of T-Rexes. This makes it easier to believe that feathers were exclusive to smaller tyrannosaurids and were there as a means of keeping the creature warm. For a long period of time, researchers thought feathers were an exclusive feature of the theropod family. But this theory has been debunked. Just like the kid at camp who was kicked out of the top bunk. You know, debunked. Anyway. Fossil evidence discovered in Siberia now suggests that multiple different family groups of dinosaurs had feathers. The Siberian fossils in question belong to another species of dinosaur, Calendodromius zabicolicus. Oh, you think I mispronounced that? Okay, prove it. Now, this dinosaur, I'll call her Kalinda, had a pelvis structure superficially similar to that of a bird and was roughly 4.5 feet long, about as tall as a fridge. Since the purpose of feathers on dinosaurs was for warmth, it's quite possible that dinosaurs from cold-weather climates had more feathers than their counterparts in warm-weather climates. In general, bigger animals struggle less with keeping themselves cool, so it's likely that any of the large dinosaurs who lived in these warm climates had no feathers at all. Smaller dinosaurs who lived in cold climates, on the contrary, had plenty of feathers. We now even understand what some of the designs and patterns of these feathers on dinosaurs looked like, thanks to the discovery of an ornithomimus, complete with feather and skin impressions. The name of this dinosaur is derived from Greek and actually translates to bird mimic. They were typically 11 and a half feet in length, nearly as tall as a giraffe, and despite being omnivorous, had no teeth. Its other distinctive features include three fingers which were all unusually the same size and length. And despite their thin bone skulls, they also had large brain cavities. Their legs were extremely long, in particular their foot bones. Combine this with their toothless beaks and long necks, and yep, it must have looked a lot like an ostrich. Although they're not as big as the brachiosaurus or dinosaurs in general, they are bigger than any other bird in the world. And it wasn't just the body limbs of an ornithomimus that made it resemble an ostrich. They also had very similar feather patterns. Their heads, necks, and lower legs were mostly bare of feathers, but the rest of their bodies were well coated in downy plumage. This is what you call a bird's layer of feathers as a whole. It's possible, like an ostrich, that the dinosaur would have used this unusual feather pattern to regulate its body temperature. Despite some dinosaurs possessing feathers like birds, on top of also being their distant relatives, dinosaurs didn't have the type of feathers required to fly for most of their existence. Feathers found in fossil impressions or preserved in amber have allowed researchers to gain insight into why these creatures weren't very aerodynamic. The structure of these feathers appears to be very simple, with a poorly defined and flexible central shaft. These feathers would have better served any dinosaur as a fashion statement, as they would have helped attract the attention of other dinosaurs. These feathers also would have had the ability to regulate body temperature. Surprised to hear that dinosaurs had ostrich-like feathers? <laughs> Wait till I tell you that their prehistoric distant reptile cousins had something that looked like fur. Allow me to introduce you to the pterosaur. Its name is derived from Greek and translates to wing lizard. Just like dinosaurs, they were initially thought to have scaly or leathery skin all over their bodies. But over the course of the 20th century, fossil examinations revealed that many parts of a pterosaur's body were furry. The wingspan of a pterosaur could reach the length of over 23 feet, about as long as a London bus. Its toothless jaw was very long and resembled that of a pelican. How could something that looks like a pelican be so terrifying? These creatures were coated in pycnofibers. Those were simple structures, feather-like in composition, but strand-like and fuzzy like fur. Further research suggests that some parts of the pterosaur's body had more complex kinds of feathers with branching strands. If this is accurate, it would be the first time feathers were found on an animal that was neither a dinosaur nor a bird. The problem with that asteroid that destroyed dinosaurs was not that it fell, but where it fell. 
this colossal space rock found the worst place where it could land. Also, the angle at which it hit the ground was the most unfortunate. If it had fallen vertically, there would have been less destruction. But it fell at such an angle that it threw a huge amount of dust into the air. After the disaster occurred, tons of soot started burning. 65 million years ago, only 13% of Earth's surface contained the right amount of sulfur and oil needed to form a colossal amount of soot. If the asteroid had fallen on the other 87% of the territory, dinosaurs could still be living today, but it hit the worst place and lifted a million tons of burning material into the sky. A cloud of incandescent particles covered the sky and set off on a journey across the mainland. Then, these particles settled on the ground and caused large-scale fires. Trees were burning and sending more soot into the sky. But the asteroid collided not only with rocks, it fell on the coast in a place where the seabed was filled with sulfate. As a result of the collision, it started burning, which caused the release of sulfuric acid into the atmosphere. The air became poisoned. It seems the dinosaurs didn't stand a chance. And now, let's imagine the asteroid falling in another place, somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Huge waves flooded part of the land, but almost all kinds of dinosaurs survived, or even better. The rock could have fallen somewhere in the desert and left behind a giant crater. That's all. Yes, several dinosaurs passing by wouldn't have survived the collision, but the situation wouldn't have been so critical in general. So, giant lizards remain dominant on our planet. They don't allow other animals to develop since Tyrannosaurus and other ferocious reptiles hunt mammoths and other ancient creatures. The population of mammals is decreasing. Velociraptors are fighting for territories with saber-toothed tigers and giant bears. A struggle for survival between dinosaurs and other animals begins. Then the Ice Age comes, and some reptiles don't survive. Then new players enter the field. Those are humans' early ancestors. Living side by side with dinosaurs is difficult. Lizards attack settlements and caves, so people have to build high walls for protection. By the way, the Tyrannosaurus poses less danger to people than you might have thought. According to the latest research, many creatures were able to run away from this monster. Yes, you probably saw how easily they caught up with cars in the movies, but it wouldn't be as scary in reality. Paleontologists and biologists have analyzed the strength of dino's bones and found out that the creature couldn't reach high speeds. The maximum it was capable of was running twice as slow as a field athlete. Thousands of years have passed. People have learned to live with dinosaurs. They've even managed to tame some lizards. They've domesticated herbivorous dinosaurs to develop agriculture. Triceratopses and bulls now plow fields together. Imagine farms swarming with Diplodocuses or Brachiosauruses. People climb their long necks and pick fruit from high trees. Stegosauruses protect pastures from wolves and velociraptors. Dinosaurs with shells, such as Ankylosauruses, help people across deserts. They, along with camels and donkeys, carry heavy loads. People share the planet with ancient lizards and live in harmony. The situation in the seas and oceans is much worse. Sea reptiles attack wooden ships and catch all the fish. Imagine that you're sailing to another continent with tons of grain, fabrics, fur, and other goods. And then a giant mosasaur appears on the horizon. It's one of the most powerful sea lizards. A great white shark looks like a small fish next to it. The creature could easily defeat a megalodon. And then it comes across a wooden ship. It bites into the deck and pulls the whole boat underwater. Water dinosaurs are the main obstacle to communication between countries. This slows the progress down for a hundred years. People built metal ships to withstand the attacks of the Mosasaur. And finally, they managed to establish sea connections. A similar problem occurs when the first planes take off into the sky. Imagine you're flying on a passenger Boeing. You look out of the window and see a pterodactyl. Ah, wait, it's impossible. These winged lizards aren't so fast but they can catch up with a helicopter or some old biplanes. This poses a serious threat to flights, so people install sound protection systems on board each aircraft. Pterodactyls hear irritating ultrasound from a distance and fly as far away from it as possible. 
people equip submarines and ships with the same sound shields. Then, after people have learned how to defend themselves from dinosaurs, another problem appears. Lizards are the kings of wildlife, so they displace all other animal species. Dinosaurs run across African savannas, and lizards with fur live in cold winter forests. Lions, wolves, and bears are not the rulers of the wild. Rhinos fight with Parasaurolophuses. Stegosauruses attack hippos and take away their territories. Venomous dinosaurs live in jungles. Lizards that can climb trees scare monkeys. Imagine a reptilian ape jumping from one branch to another. To save regular animals from extinction, people have to control the population of predatory reptiles. Huge parks and nature reserves appear in all countries. People transport dinosaurs there and separate them from other wildlife. Dinosaurs seem to be completely under control. When the danger caused by giant reptiles passes, people begin to breed smaller, harmless lizards. Someone buys a chameleon, and someone keeps a microceratus at home. There are dinosaur exhibitions. People take these creatures for a walk as if they were dogs. Some people take selfies with reptiles, go shopping, and sit in cafes with small lizards. Dinosaurs aren't formidable now. They're kinda cute. People ride horses, camels, Parasaurolophysis and Pachycephalosauruses. Of course, many have tried to tame Velociraptors, but failed. Those are dangerous reptiles and they don't know how to obey. Taming them is almost as difficult as taming an alligator. But dogs and cats are still more popular because they're more intelligent. The brain of a dinosaur is almost as same as that of a chicken. But who knows, if they had lived to this day, perhaps they would have evolved into smarter creatures. Just imagine if dinos were intelligent. In this case, people would have a big problem. Some scientists think that even if a meteorite hadn't destroyed the dinosaurs, they wouldn't have survived to this day. They needed to carry their own colossal weight at all times. It was an enormous load on their bones and joints. Most dinosaurs wouldn't have been able to survive the Ice Age with such characteristics, but smaller lizards might have succeeded. Fast and agile dinosaurs, such as Velociraptors and Pachycephalosauruses, would have survived. But in what form? Could dinosaurs have already evolved into something else? Look at the good old chicken. Many scientists believe it's a direct descendant of the formidable Tyrannosaurus. Somewhere deep inside the bird's DNA, there are genes that the dinosaur had. Yep, it's hard to believe, but look at the chicken's body structure and how it walks. Remove the plumage, cover the creature with scales, and give it toothy jaws instead of a beak. And now, you have a mini T-Rex in the coop. And by the way, not only chickens might be the relatives of giant lizards, many birds are dinosaurs' living descendants. Surprisingly, alligators, snakes, crocodiles, and monitor lizards are not as close to ancient reptiles as pelicans, storks, and other flying creatures. Over millions of years of evolution, the paws of dinosaurs turned into wings and toothy elongated jaws ended up as beaks. The genetics of birds is the key to understanding dinosaurs. Pelicans are similar to pterodactyls, ostriches to velociraptors. Perhaps many other animals also share some genes with ancient lizards. If the meteorite hadn't fallen, all dinosaurs would have evolved into completely different, unusual creatures. Scientists want to carefully study the DNA of birds and try to reverse evolution with the help of genetic engineering. They hope to breed dinosaurs out of eggs one day. But to do this, they need to find a specific genome that hasn't changed over tens of millions of years. It hides in the DNA, and it's not so easy to find it and extract it. Do you think we will see powerful reptiles by 2050? This day isn't different than any other. Well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> you crawl out of bed, your hair's a mess, a huge yawn stretching your jaws. Five more minutes and you could be late. So, no time to waste. You blast through your morning routines, skip breakfast, throw on your jacket, and hurriedly close the door. Bang! Darkness. You slowly blink your eyes open. The air smells different, making you feel dizzy. Your ears catch something similar to a dino movie soundtrack. Once you glance around, though, you realize it looks like a prehistoric world, too. It's humid and warm. Everything around you looks green and lush. You spot several creatures moving among the trees. 
Some of them have bills that make them look like overgrown ducks. Others have horns. That's when your brain kicks in. Those are dinosaurs. So you have indeed somehow moved all the way back to prehistoric times. Right after the realization hits, you feel something tickling your arm. With a feeling of dread, you sneak a peek. Huh, what is this creature comfortably nestled on your sleeve? What you notice first is that it's tiny, way, way smaller than your cat. It's likely napping on your pillow back at home in the moment. Picture a hummingbird, the smallest bird on Earth. The creature on your sleeve is even smaller than that. Is it some weird prehistoric insect? No, it's a dino, the tiniest dinosaur that ever lived. The creature's called Oculu dentavis, which means in Latin, eye-tooth bird. With a skull that's less than a quarter of an inch long, the animal itself is about two inches long. You can hardly feel its weight on your arm. The tiny thing doesn't weigh more than an ounce. The dino is obviously a meat-eater. It has more than 100 microscopic teeth. They're conical with sharp edges. For a second, you can't breathe. What if it bites you? You don't even know if the thing is venomous. But it looks as if the dino bird is only interested in insects that are flying by. The creature also has huge eyes. They're so large, it's a bit alarming. They face to the sides and bulge out of its head. They're built in the way that makes it clear the tiny dino is active most during the day. If only there was a scientist next to you. They would tell you how such a minuscule creature could exist in the prehistoric world of giants. It was likely because of the miniaturization. That's when relatively large animals became smaller over generations. It sometimes happens to species that live on islands or are isolated from other animals. Another thing an expert could tell you? The creature sitting on your arm might not even be a dino. After scientists examine the ancient animal's skull, or should we say will examine, they suggested it was not a dinosaur, but a lizard. But even if their guess is right, it was a bizarre lizard. After all, it has a bird's head. Anyway, whatever the animal is, you are tired of standing still trying not to disturb it. But as soon as you take a step, everything goes dark again. Bang! You cautiously open your eyes. Another day, another jungle. You look around to check your surroundings. And that's when you notice that several massive bushes on the left have started to move. You know you should probably run away as fast as you can, but your curiosity wins. You sneak up closer to have a look, and your ear-piecing shriek is heard miles away. The creature you're looking at is similar to a millipede. An enormous, six-foot-long millipede, the largest among them all. It's called Arthropleura. Scientists aren't sure why this bug, like many others, was so large 300 million years ago. Maybe because there was too much oxygen in the atmosphere. 30% of the air then versus 21% now. It probably helped prehistoric insects grow so massive. Plus, there was nothing around that could eat them. The only comforting thought that doesn't let you pass out from sheer horror is that the monster isn't likely to be a meat-eater. It's related to millipedes, and they eat decomposing organic matter. Mmm, yum. You hardly have some time to take a breath when something swooshes past you. You realize it's time you got used to scary overgrown creatures. This flying one looks like a dragonfly, but its wingspan is no less than two feet. Scientists claim it's been the largest known insect of all time. The craziest thing, though? The insect looks exactly like a scaled-up dragonfly, but it actually belongs to the now extinct order of griffinflies. But what's that? Instead of flying away, the not-a-dragonfly is turning back. Um, it's moving toward you. Paralyzed by fear, you don't even try to run away. Bang! Darkness. Well, this is getting old. You open your eyes and see a dark shadow towering over your lying body. This is definitely a dino. You even know its name, the Stegosaurus. These large dinosaurs lived during the late Jurassic period, around 150 million years ago. They had absolutely amazing plates placed along their spine. The largest were more than 2 feet tall and 2 feet wide. Stegosauruses were heavy, massive, and clumsy. 
They grew more than twice as tall as an adult person and weighed about 5 tons. At the same time, this huge body was controlled by a tiny brain. It was twice smaller than the brain of a modern dog. It was one of the reasons why the dinosaur was such a slow thing. Some experts claim its maximum speed was no more than 5 miles per hour. Now, before you have time to get afraid, you realize the creature isn't interested in you whatsoever. But what an impressive plant-eating machine it is! With the help of its toothless beak, it's nipping low-growing plants, like pines, firs, and cyads. But soon, you understand you shouldn't let your guard down. A dark shadow covers the sky. Ah, you know this guy too! That's a pterodactyl! It was the first discovered species of pterosaurs, large flying reptiles. The pterodactyl walked on four legs and, unlike some other members of its family, it had teeth. By the way, even though pterodactyls were flying creatures, they weren't ancestors of modern-day birds. Those descended from tiny meat-eating dinosaurs that walked on two legs and were covered in feathers. Anyway, the creature circling in the air over your head doesn't look as frightening as in the movies. It's rather small, with its wingspan no more than 3 feet. But to be on the safe side, you decide to hide under the trees. Hey, you've been around pigeons. Imagine a present from this character. Ah, never mind. It's just your luck to trip over a tree root while retreating to the questionable safety of the forest. Your back hits the ground. Bang! Darkness. Well, when you come around again, you find it hard to breathe. It feels as if something's wrapped around your body. You raise your head, slowly and cautiously. Ah, is this day gonna end? A colossal snake has coiled itself around you. The creature's so large, you immediately realize it's the titanoboa. No other reptile, living or extinct, can be that big. The snake weighs more than a ton and is probably around 42 feet long. For comparison, one of the largest modern snakes, the anaconda, weighs one quarter of a ton and reaches the length of 30 feet at the most. The titanoboa lived around 60 million years ago in South America. Just like modern anacondas, it loved damp places hidden in tropical rainforests. Scientists aren't sure, but they think the prehistoric reptile could live in or near the water. Then it probably fed on crocodiles, turtles, and even fish. Suddenly, you feel the snake move. Is it going to squeeze tight around you? That's when you start to regret you can't do that time jump thing at your whim. And then, bang, darkness. You find yourself on the bank of a wide river. Once you get closer to the water, you notice something moving under the surface. You lean down to check what it is, but the next moment, you spring back in fear. The two-foot-long fish you see has a single row of triangular razor-sharp teeth, each serrated like a steak knife. It's the Mega Piranha. Now, be extremely cautious. This creature packs a terrifying bite. Its force is almost 30 times the piranha's weight. And on average, this creature weighed 20 to 30 pounds. For comparison, its modern version doesn't grow heavier than 2 pounds. The Mega Piranha lived 6 to 10 million years ago in South America. Well, too long ago and too far away from your home. You sit down on the ground farther away from the river and begin to wait. Sooner or later, there will be the already familiar boom and the darkness. It'll mean your adventures will continue. Then you remember that strange-tasting burrito you had for dinner last night. Could there be some connection?